All right, so last video we were studying chapter nine, uh, I'm sorry, chapter three, section nine, uh, dealing with differentials. And what we did is we, we kind of got a geometric look at differentials uh, followed by like an intuitive way of thinking of uh, differentials. And then we also uh, practiced just a little bit of how to uh, methodology of how to find a differential. Uh, I did not sell you on why you would or should care about differentials. Now, for this video, is I'm going to try to do that. So the idea of um, of of measuring. Remember, I I mentioned in the previous video that if you if you pick up some type of a tool to measure something, doesn't matter if it's a thermometer or a ruler, or, uh, or, or, or no matter what it is, it will, that, that measuring tool will be good to a certain level, right? And it will have a built-in error. Now, let's talk a little bit more about that part. So let me read the following question, and then if you take a look off to the right, I have all of those definitions um, I, I've copied and pasted here so we don't have to scroll back. But the question reads as follows. So you have, so the measured radius of a ball bearing, okay, is 0 0.7 inches as shown. So, so here we have some type of ball bearing and you have measured the radius to be 0 0.7 inches. All right, now, the measurement is correct to within 0 0.01 inch. Now, in other words, the tool that you're using, you can look up the, the error, right, the, the, the measurement uh, error and for, of this particular tool, and this tool is good or cor uh, is correct to within 0 0.01 inch. Now, what we would like to do is estimate the propagated error. Now, let me highlight that because we got to make sure we understand by what we mean by propagated error. So we want to estimate the propagated error in the volume of the ball bearing. Okay, so let's let me build us let me build us up to the propagated error. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and say that R and or you know it, it could be X in, in previous cases, but since this is dealing with uh, radius, the R is the measured value. Okay. Now, we've already we've already um, learned that the 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 value we got. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and write it. So in this example, r is equal to zero point seven. Now we already know that that is incorrect. Okay, or it is good to within zero point oh one inch. But we weren't measuring the radius of this ball bearing just to measure the radius of the ball bearing, right? We actually wanted to, at some point in time, use the radius of that ball bearing to find the volume of, uh, uh, use the radius to find the volume of the ball bearing, right? So the volume of a ball bearing is four thirds pi r cubed, so this is the volume formula for a sphere. And now let me see if you'll agree with me. So if we already have error in our first measurement, don't you agree with me that when we plug that radius into our volume formula, that means we're also going to have error in our volume? That makes sense, right? So we need to see how we can connect these two. We have errors in the in the in R, so that means there's going to be errors in V. 
okay? So what we're going to, the way we're going to think about this is whatever that error, okay, the error in our measurement. So the error in radius. That's what, and now in this case here, we, we labeled it um, delta x. But since we're not using the variable x in this problem, I'm just going to go ahead and label it delta r. So this, we can think about this, the, if, if I knew the, if I knew the error, and if I took the error in the, in, in R plus R, I would get to the exact radius. Does that make sense to you? If I just know the exact error in my measurement, then I can compensate for that, that error. All right, so now let's talk about uh, uh, the propagated error. So in this case, let's actually calculate V. So V in this particular case would be 4 thirds pi. Now we found a radius uh, when, in our measurement of 0 0.7 and that would be cubed. So Plugging uh, 0 0.7, plugging R in to our volume formula. And we should get a value of, I, I may have to actually do this. Let me make sure. Actually, I think I have. I think I'm, we're going to get V of 0 0.7 is, that's approximately 1.2. Four, three, six, seven. Now, listen. I understand that I, I have, I've, I'm compounding my my errors. I'm rounding on top of, uh, uh of of already having error in my, in my measurement of radius. But I don't want to, um, I don't want to write a, a big complicated fraction with pi, because my goal right now is to make sure you understand that what I highlighted above. I want you to understand what propagated error is. So, in this case, just like R is the measured volume, in this case, V is the, what? It is the computed volume. Okay, so we know that the that 1.4367 is definitely not the true volume of that ball bearing. Even if that were the exact, even if I didn't round, it's still not, we know that's not the true volume because there's error in the measurement of the radius. Now let's get to it. So what do I mean by propagated error? All right, well, the propagated error is the error in the volume for this problem. So let me write it. It would, I'm going to, now I'm going to use the f of x notation that I've been using um, uh, with the, the formulas above. So this is the propagated error, f of x plus delta x minus f of x. That's what we mean by propagated error. And now, and now, let me make sure you understand that this would be the true volume. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to, in the context of this problem, this would be the true volume and the, minus the computed volume. And are you ready? All of this to finally sell you on why, if you're an engineer student or a science student, why you need to pay attention right now. Do we know the true volume of that ball bearing? 
No. I mean, can we go, well, can we just go get another tool out of, 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 out of the toolbox? No. Because every tool we use, every single tool that we use is going to have an error. So you do not know the true volume because you're never going to know the true radius. Does that make sense to you? So this, you're, you're, since you're never going to have this part in, uh, in the field, then how are you ever going to find the error, the propagated error? Well, now is when I sell you on the differential. Notice that f of x plus delta x minus f of x can be, can be estimated, there it is, by the differential of y. So that's why you want to pay attention right now. Because I, if, I can, you, if I can find dy, that's not the true propagated error, but that is a good estimate of the propagated error. Now, let me, let me not write that. So what I want in this problem is going to be to find dy. I hope that that serves. I hope that helps you. Okay, well, how do we do it? Well, the good news is um, let's go ahead and I'm going, to, I'm going to go to the next page. You're going to, unfortunately, I'm going to have to come back and forth between them. So let me, let me do this. Let me take this with me. And I'll park that right there. And now, now let's actually answer the question. Okay, are you ready? So V was equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed. Now, in that problem, we were told that r is equal to 0 0.7. So what we're going, what we want to be able to do, just like I said, dy, in this case, we want to find dv. So I'm going to take the derivative of that volume formula with respect, now not to x, there's no x variable, but with respect to r. Okay, so let me go ahead and do that right now. So 4 thirds pi r cubed. Uh, by the way, um, this I don't think this is going to be the majority of you, but pi is not a variable. It's just a number. It's a, it's a constant. Uh, that pi is somewhere on this number line, just like the number 3 is somewhere on that number line. Okay, so let's go ahead and write it. So this is going to be we take the derivative of this, it's going to be 3 times 4 thirds times pi, and now times r squared, because we subtract 1 from the exponent. All right. So that means dv dr. I'm going to cancel those 3s. That leaves me with 4 pi r squared. All right. Now... Let's, let's use this Leibniz notation to bring the dr to the other side, and, I, and we'll have solved for dv. So in this case, dv, the differential, is going to be equal to 4 multiplied by pi multiplied by r squared multiplied by dr. Okay, and now let's you and I agree that I know what to plug in for r, right? We got 0.7. But what about dr? Well, if you, if you recall, we were told that um, the measurement in the radius was good to within 0 0.01 inch. So that is, uh, that is going to be dr. All right. So to make sure you just really quickly, so that means 
you, you really should think of it as dr is going to be plus or minus. Uh, let, me, let me state it this way. You really should think of it like this. The, tr uh, the radius is always going to be plus or minus 0 0.01. That's what we mean by that. Um, by that measurement is correct to within. That, okay, so it could be 0 0.01 above what we measured it to be or 0 0.01 below what we measured it to be. Nevertheless, let's plug some values in. So that's 4 times pi times 0 0.7 squared times 0 0.01. All right. So again, uh, I'm, I, I've, my former professors would not like the fact that I'm rounding while I'm talking about estimating, esti you know, error analysis. I'm, I'm, <laughs> they, they would, uh, they would, they would email me and say, that's, I don't, don't ever tell anyone that I taught you. Uh, nevertheless, I, I, the point is just to show you how to think about this propagated error. Uh, so what I'm going to do is DV is roughly 0 0.06158 uh, cubic inches. And again, for our for our problem, we're just going to make that 0 0.06 cubic inches. Okay, so that's our dv. All right, so what is our propagated error? Well, you just found it. Your propagated error is 0 0.06. And now, you know how to find it, but do you understand what you just did? So, every time you grab that tool and measure r, it's always going to be, I don't know why I wrote equal symbol here. It's going to be, it's always going to be R plus or minus the error, 0 0.01. But be, now when you take that computed value and input that into your volume formula, that means your volume is always going to be plus or minus 0 0.06. So now we have a feeling of what it means to uh, talk of uh, what it means when somebody says the propagated error. Okay. This is the, uh, this is approximately the prop. So this is the propagated error. Now, a lot of times what, and if I'm going to go back a previous page, I don't know uh, no, this in the I just read the question. They never asked for the relative error, so that's the propagated error. Um, if if you run a, into a scenario where you're asked to find the relative error, uh, it's just basically you know it's hard to understand all these these uh, tiny decimals. So what we do is we turn them into percentages so we can understand the type of errors that we're dealing with. So the the relative error is just going to be the propagated error divided by uh, or let me let me do it this way in this case it would be dv divided by v okay so if i would have if i would not have rounded then i would write given in terms of pi i would write dv and over the actual volume formula but since I was, I was a bad, a bad math student, and I decided to round while rounding, and compile my error, I'm just going to finish it. So dv, we saw that was 0 0.06, and on the previous page, we calculated the volume to be 1.4367. Look at me, I'm, I didn't even use the same uh, significant figures when I was rounding. So 1.4367. So now what, if you were to grab your calculator and run that quotient, 
you would get 0 0.0429. Now turn that to a decimal. I'm sorry, turn that to a percent so that others can understand what that means. And you end up with 4.29%. That would be the relative error. Does that make, I hope that makes sense. So look, in other words, uh, when, if you're calculating volumes, listen, listen, so we're done. We're done with this. You have everything you need to get the problem right on your test. If you're, if the tool that you keep measuring with always has, is correct within 0 0.01 inches, you can expect that your volume is going to be off by 4%, 4.29%, okay? Up, up, up towards a 4.29%. So that's the relative error. We are done with that problem. One more last thing to do for this section. Let me now, there's one little, uh, one, one thing that we haven't used differentials for yet. And that's this, this guy right here. So we were able to use differentials to find the approximate change in y. Now we're going to use differentials to show you how you can approximate y. The y, right? So let me make sure you understand. So let's start with a question. It says, use differentials to approximate the square root of 16.5. Okay. So... Maybe, maybe we think of it like this. Uh, let's add some context. Let's just assume that you've got an internship. Um, uh, you know, I have, a, I have a, a, good, a good friend of mine that does consulting work, and um, he hires interns all the time, and he loves to just give them, you know, problems that, uh, and take away any resources they have available to them, like, you know, calculators, cell phones, things like that. And it's more of a, just a, a test to see what they can do. So I can see, I can see a, a colleague uh, of mine asking their intern to tell, for them to tell them what the square root of 16.5 is and without using a calculator, right? He would find that fun. Let's just put it that way. Well, let's start. So you want the square, let's, first let's agree that the square root of 16.5 is somewhere between the, uh, what, somewhere between the square root of 16 and the square root of, let's do 25, right? So that means, well, the square root of 16 is 4, and the square root of, of 25 is 5. So you could turn to this, um, you know, if you're the intern, you could turn them to that, uh, that your boss and say, um, well, it's somewhere between four and five, right? Okay, well, that's, that's good. I mean, that's least that that's better than, um, than say, I have no idea. You know, it's between four and five, but let's see if you can do better than that, right? I mean, you're going to, you're going to look like a genius to this, um, to your boss in just a second. So, the way we're going to think about this is we're going to think about f of x the, the, as being the square root of 16. Now, hold on for a second. I'm going to walk you through this. Why did I do that? Because I know the square root of 16, right? That's easy. And I'm going to think about dx as being, well, I'm off by a little bit, right? If you turn to your boss and said the square root of 16.5 is 4, well, clearly it's a little bit bigger than 4, right? So I'm off by what? I'm off by 0 0.5. So you see how, so now you kind of understand that f of x can be the square root of 16 and dx can be thought of as 0 0.5. But now, your boss asked for you to find this. He asked, can you find f of x plus delta x? Now remember, 
for our purposes, dx and delta x are the same. So when, when your boss turned to you and said, hey, can you give me a, a, can you tell me what the square root of 16.5 is? He's really asking if you take 0 0.5 um, and plug it in to, so it, or let's say f of x is, this, I did this wrong, I did this totally wrong. f x is 16, not f of x is 16 f of x is 16. f of x is actually the function. Hold on, almost there. So x is 16. All right, so you agree with me? If you take 16 plus 0 0.5, 16 plus 0 0.5, I get the square root of 16.5. Okay, so far so good. Now, the what I... Uh, the, the mistake that I made was, how, do we, how are we going to think about just f of x? All right, well, that's, we're going to think about f of x as just the function, the square root of x. Okay, does that make sense? So we were asked to find the square root of 16.5. We chose x to be 16 because that's an easy square root to take. But that would leave us with a dx or a delta x of 0 0.5. Now, your boss, he actually wants, he or she wants the square root of 16.5. So now let me call attention to this formula right here. So the, the square root of 16.5 can be approximated by f of x plus, let me actually, no need to cram this in here. Let me write it down below. So the square root of 16.5 can be approximated by f of x plus f prime of x times dx. Okay, so let's start to think about the information that we have. Do we have dx? Well, yes, we have dx. That We know we're going to put a 0 0.5 in for dx. Do we have f of x? Yes, we know that. That's just going to be the square root of x. Do we have... What else do we have? We also know what... We also know that x is equal to 16. The thing that we're missing right now is the derivative, the f prime. So let's do that right now. So f prime of x, the derivative of f, would be, well, that's just thinking about x to the power of a half. So that's 1 over 2 square roots of x. Are you ready? I'm going to plug every... I'm going to plug f prime here. I'm going to plug f here. And let's, we're pretty close to finishing this up. So the square root of 16.5 can be approximated by the square root of x plus 1 over 2 square roots of x times dx. And now I'm going to I'm going to take that information. I'm going to take that information and I'm going to give myself a new page so that we have uh, more room. Give me just a second. So let's copy that. And let's see if I have another page. Nope, let me make one. All right, here we go. So let me go ahead and continue the problem. So let me assume that you are with me so far. You, you follow me so far. And now let's fill out the things that we know. Do we know what x is? Yes, we do. We know x is 16. Do we know what dx is? Yes, we do. We know dx is 0, uh, point, uh, point 0.5. So let's plug 16 wherever we see an x. Let's plug a 
0 0.5 for the dx. And let's get to our estimate and let's impress our, bo our, our boss. Ready? So the square root of 16 plus 1 over 2 square roots of 16 multiplied by a half, 0 0.5. All right, so now just imagine yourself, you're, you're busy in the, in the corner. Maybe it's you and a few other interns. The other interns are saying, well, I don't know. Or the other interns are saying, well, somewhere between four and five. And then all of a sudden, you walk up to this uh, boss and say, well, hold on, you're not done yet, so don't walk up yet. So four plus one over two times four. Well, that's not bad. Okay, if I write... 0 0.5, I'm just going to write that as a fraction, right? That'll be, that'll make things a little bit easier. So that's going to be 4 plus 1 over 8 times 1 over 2, which is 4 plus a 16th, right? Now, if you, if you know your, uh, a 16th is, so... That's 4 plus uh, a 16th is a, you know, roughly 0 0.0625. All right, so now you walk up to your um, boss and maybe your potential employer and say, well, I'm getting a, about 4.0625 as uh, for, for the square root, a good approximation for the square root of 16.5. And your boss, who also doesn't know what the square root of 16.5 is, grabs their calculator, and I'll be the role of your boss for a second. Square root of 16.5. You can check this as well. Here's what, here's what I got using a calculator. 4.062019. I'm going to stop. You are pretty darn close. right? You have impressed the, your boss. You are hired on the spot. Got it? All right, I'll see you again in Chapter 4.